Hey everybody, um, I'm back to read another chapter of The Littles. We're actually in chapter three. Uh, let's review a little bit about what happened in chapter one and chapter two. So we reviewed our characters, The Littles family. So we have Tom and Lucy, Mr. and Mrs. Little, their uncle and their grandma. Um, and we actually met a new character in chapter two and it's their cousin Dinky. And we learned a little bit about him. We learned that he's an adventurer. So he likes doing adventurous, fun, sometimes risky things. Um, but one of the things he does is he actually visits all the different littles families that live in all of these big houses. So because the littles are so small, and they all live in a different house. They don't really get to visit each other. But Cousin Dinky actually flies a plane and he goes to each house on those windy days um, and he visits everybody. He shares their letters or shares stories. And the littles are hoping that he's coming over soon to visit. So they're very excited. Um, Cause in that chapter two and chapter one, Lucy and Tom were talking about how sometimes they feel sad and lonely because they don't really get to hang out with their friends often. So we're going to start chapter three and see what happens next. Here's our picture. You can tell they're on the roof of the house because they're waiting to see um, if Cousin Dinky's plane flies in. The wind blew hard from the east all that day. Clouds hurried across the sky. Treetops fought the wind. Mr. Little was standing on the big roof with Lucy and Tom. It was the first time Lucy's mother let her go up on the roof. Try to stay close to the shelter of the chimney, said Mr. Little. It's very windy up here. We don't want anyone losing their balance. Tom looked over the edge of the roof and doing a nosedive into Mrs. Big's gooseberry bush, he added, where is Cousin Dinky, said Lucy. She looked at the sky. You'd think he'd be here by now if he were coming, said Tom. The wind has been blowing for hours. He may have been all the way to the end of the big valley, said Mr. Little. There are quite a few families between here and the eastern end of the valley. And he has to pick up and drop off the, the mail at each house as he goes by. If he stops at every house, said Lucy, how will he ever have time to get here today? You know he doesn't stop at every house, said Tom. He picks up the mail without landing. Right, said Mr. Little. He pointed to the end of the t Big's TV antenna. We loop the strap of our mail sack over the end of the antenna. Cousin Dinky glides in and yanks the, sa the sack off the antenna with a hook. It works beautifully. But how do we get our mail, said Lucy. He drops it in the chimney, said Mr. Little. In the chimney, said Lucy. Mr. Little laughed. He doesn't go down the chimney, Lucy, he said. We've strung a net across the chimney. The net is just a few inches down from the top. It lets the smoke go up and it keeps the letters from going down. But doesn't Cousin Dinky usually land at our house, said Lucy. Well, said Mr. Little, we're his closest relatives. He likes to stop off here. There's Cousin Dinky now, shouted Tom. Mr. Little and Lucy looked up. They saw a light blue glider coming towards them out of the eastern sky. The glider was flying low, almost as low as the trees at the edge of the big's yard. He's too low, said Mr. Little. Get higher. Get up higher, he shouted. Suddenly, the glider dived down towards the trees. The little lost sight of it for a moment. There he is, shouted Lucy. Wow, said Tom. He went under the trees. The glider rose in a long curve to the roof. As it drew near, two parachutes snapped open. The parachutes acted like a brake and made the glider slow down. At the same time, the pilot threw out the fish hook and tried and tried to anchor to a piece of the twine. The anchor caught on a shingle and the glider bounced to a landing. Cousin Dinky leapt from the cockpit and helped the littles tie the glider to the roof. If you see, there's our roof. And so the littles are all standing on the roof 
waiting for him to land um, and kind of like in this crease you can kind of see that rope and there he is Oops. in his plane do you see those parachutes he lets out the parachutes and that slow him down so that he can land on the roof and then he kind of throws out that like string there and that catches on the roof if you kind of see that hook by my other finger and then he can land on the roof. When that was done, the four of them laughed and hugged one another. What of my rougher landings, said Cousin Dinky. It's the wind, a little faster than I like to fly in. Mr. Little shook his head. Dinky, he said, you're going to get killed landing some one of these days. Isn't there a better way? If you mean, isn't there a safer way, Uncle Will, said Cousin Dinky. Sure, there's a safer way. I could land on that big airstrip, he pointed to the bigs driveway. But when I want to take off again, I'd have to get the glider up on the roof anyway. Might as well land here in the first place. Did you bring us any letters, Cousin Dinky? Lucy asked. I did, Lucy, I did, said Cousin Dinky. If you people will help me get these sacks downstairs, he reached into the cockpit of the glider and pulled out a armful of mail sacks. I'll sort your letters from the rest in a jiffy. Did I get a letter from Tina Small, said Lucy. You did, you did, said Cousin Dinky. I visited with the Smalls on my way down east. He reached into his large coat pocket. I have it right here. Oh, good, said Lucy. She hugged Cousin Dinky. You're wonderful, Cousin Dinky. I love it when you come to visit. Now, let's get out of this wind, said Mr. Little. Dinky, you must be hungry. That's a true fact, Uncle Will, said Cousin Dinky. Hungry's the word. And what I'm hungry for is Mrs. Big's cooking. No one in this part of the valley can hold a candle to Mrs. Big when it comes to cooking. Come on, said Mr. Little. He looked at the sun in the west. The sun in the west. By this time, the Bigs are about ready to eat dessert. If we hurry, we'll be just in time to take some leftovers. Hold everything, said Cousin Dinky. I almost forgot my guitar. I've learned a new song I want to sing to you. Tom, will you get my guitar for me? It's in the back of the glider, behind the seat. Okay, Cousin Dinky, said Tom. But he did seem to be in a hurry to get the guitar. There was one thing Tom could never understand. How could a great man like Cousin Dinky have such a bad singing voice? and not know it. You see him? So that's them on the roof, there's the plane, and that's Tom getting the guitar. And that is the end of chapter three. So we met Cousin Dinky, he's coming to visit the Littles, um, and he's bringing them some letters.